What's up guys? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Today we are going to be focusing on the Detroit Lions week 9 matchup as they travel to Minnesota to take on our division rival for the first time in 2020. However, before we do get into it, if you are new to the channel and are enjoying this type of content, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with a Lions or an NFL fan that you think would enjoy this type of content. You know, every single person that even views a video, you know, or likes or subscribes to the channel motivates me and helps me get better as a content creator and just motivates me and is very supportive towards me. And I appreciate everybody that decides to help me out on this channel. But with that being said, let's get right into the week nine matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. So the Detroit Lions are currently five and two. They are coming off a big win against the Indianapolis Colts uh, last week. You know, now they are traveling to Minnesota to take on a very, very good Minnesota Vikings team. Uh, the Lions are currently first place in the North, and they're trying to retain that lead while conquering the Vikings in Week 9 to, you know, further that gap for first place in the North. The last time the Detroit Lions played in Minnesota, they lost 22-7. You know, the Detroit Lions don't have a fantastic record in the Vikings' new stadium. They just can't seem to get it done there. Um, and we'll see if that trend continues this week. J but... Um, you know, looking at the injuries, you know, cause the score might say that the Lions weren't, you know, very competitive. The game wasn't very close 20 to seven. You don't want to put up seven points. Cause if you're putting up seven points, you're not going to win a lot of football games. But if you look at the injuries, if you look at the guys who didn't play for the Detroit Lions, it actually makes the stat line look a little bit better. And it looks, it makes it look like the Lions, even as devastated by injuries as they were, they still competed and still made it tough on the Vikings to get this win. Now, some players that did not play were Matthew Stafford, our starting quarterback, Carrion Johnson, our starting running back, Marvin Hall, a big play wide receiver, TJ Hawkinson, a starting tight end, Deshaun Hand, a starting defensive lineman, Jamal Agnew, a starting kick and punt returner, and Rashawn Melvin, a starting cornerback for the Detroit Lions. Now, that is seven starters that did not play for the Lions, and we still held the Vikings to 20 points and still made it a two-possession game when it was all said and done. Now that you might look at that and say, okay, you made it competitive, but you didn't win the game. You only put up seven, but looking at a third string quarterback, you know, who knows how many, how deep in the depth are they had to go to find Bo Scarborough and Ty Johnson, you know, they just had so many injuries and the fact that they were still able to compete at a high level and make it a tough game to pull out for the Vikings was encouraging to say the least. Now, looking at the Vikings defense last year or looking at the Vikings offense last year, just, for, you know, to do a little bit of comparison, they they had 476 rush attempts for 2,133 yards and 19 touchdowns. Um, and to go along with that, they had 466 pass attempts for 3,523 yards and 26 touchdowns. Now, to compare that to the Detroit Lions offense, last year they had 571 passing attempts for 3,900 yards and 28 touchdowns. Now, granted, they did that with a second and third string quarterback for half the season, and they still outperformed the Minnesota Vikings in passing, passing yards and touchdowns. Now, granted, they did throw it a lot more, but that's because the running game wasn't there. The Detroit Lions only ran it 407 times, had 1,649 yards and seven touchdowns on the ground, which was obviously vastly um, inferior to the Minnesota Vikings rushing attack. I would say that last year, the Minnesota Vikings were more of a run first team. Obviously, they ran the ball more, but they were pretty even in pass to run attempts. But I think that they were much more effective as a running team. I think the offense really ran through Dalvin Cook. And when he was having a good game, it was tough to stop them. Now, switching over the defensive side, the Minnesota Vikings gave up 1,728 rushing yards last year and eight touchdowns. And on the you know flip side of that, they gave up 3,737 passing yards with 23 touchdowns. To compare that to the Lions defense, they gave up 4,551 passing yards and 33 passing touchdowns last year. You know, one of the worst in NFL history. I mean, that was just abysmal. You cannot have that happen. And they ended up giving up 1,855 yards on the ground and 13 touchdowns. So, you know, those that's comparing the two offenses and defenses to each other from last season. Just kind of seeing what each team looked like on both sides of the ball, what they were good at, what they were bad at. Um, and now we can go look at, you know, key additions and key losses. Now, looking at the key losses, you know, obviously Darius Slate and Rashawn Melvin, our two starting cornerbacks from last year, are both missing. And then Snacks Harrison, a starting defensive tackle who was supposed to be the anchor of our defense last year, you know, wasn't really the, had, didn't have the greatest season. And that's, I think that's part of the reason that the defense wasn't very good. 
but they lost a lot of secondary and some run stoppers. Patricia is really trying to transform this defense into his image, you know, get the guys that he wants, and Slay, Snacks, and Rashawn Melvin just didn't fit that plan for him mm. moving into the 2020 season. Now, on the flip side, the Minnesota Vikings lost a lot of pieces this year. Uh, they lost four cornerbacks on their defense, including Xavier Rhodes, um, but they also lost Linval Joseph, who was on the defensive line, has been there for a long time. Everson Griffin, who is currently a free agent, who might come to the Detroit Lions, there are rumors, and obviously they traded away Stephon Diggs, who did not want to be in Minnesota. Now, I think the Minnesota Vikings lost a lot more than the Detroit Lions did. The Detroit Lions, I also thought, did a better job of replacing those holes in the defense, and the Minnesota Vikings really didn't bring in a whole lot. Um, Xavier Rhodes wasn't a great cornerback. He, you know, really, his production really dropped last season, and I think that's the reason that they let him go. Linval Joseph was a solid player th for them. Everson Griffin is a very good player, very productive, gets you that 8 to 10 sacks a season, which is something that, you know, you know, you can't hurt your football team. And then Stephon Diggs is a very good, almost borderline elite receiver, you know, seemed to give Darius Slay and the Lions secondary trouble every single year. And now that he's in the Buffalo Bills system, I think that he'll be good there with Josh Allen's big arm. But switching over to the additions and how they actually replaced those missing needs, uh, you know, re you know, filled in those holes. The Lions drafted Jeffrey Okuda and obviously signed Desmond Trufant to replace Slay and Melvin. They brought in Danny Shelton to replace Snacks Harrison. And then they brought in Jamie Collins to just upgrade our linebacking position that much more because that was, I'm going to say, that was definitely a weakness last year for the Detroit Lions. Now, the Vikings only signed two free agents that were not in Minnesota last year, and those guys are Michael Pierce and Anthony Zettel, um, Anthony Zettel being a former Detroit Lion, and they didn't really bring in that much talent in free agency. Now, granted, they did have two first-round picks in which they picked Justin Jefferson, who I think is going to be a solid wide receiver, and Jeff Gladney, a cornerback from TCU who is no Jeffrey Okuda you know he's not really he wasn't really considered a top cornerback prospect in this draft um obviously a first round talent but he wasn't up there with the Okudas or the even AJ Terrell or CJ Hendersons you know and that's why he went late in the first round I think that he'll be an okay replacement but I don't think that he's going to be um you know I don't think he's going to fix that position completely with all the talent that they lost in that secondary now did the Minnesota Vikings get better? It's hard to say now because they had they lost so much in free agency and they brought in so many rookies. It's just going to be a matter of time to see, you know, can the Detroit Lions or can the Minnesota Vikings fill those holes with the rookies that they drafted from all the players that left in free agency? And I think that some of those players are going to be good. I think Jeff Gladney is going to start and be a solid cornerback. I think Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson is going to start and be a solid wide receiver for them I think they got good pieces in the draft I just think that like the Lions there's a lot of uncertainty in their roster because there's a lot of new faces now with that being said I think that this is going to be the toughest opponent in the NFC North for the Detroit Lions I think it'll be a race between Minnesota and Detroit to come up with the division with the NFC North title this season and I can really see it going either way I think the Packers got a lot worse this season I think the Bears aren't ready just because of their quarterback controversy but I think that the, this might be a spoiler for, you know, the week 17 one, but I think that the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings split their season series. I think they both win a game and lose a game. So, but I do think that the Lions, they always seem to struggle at home or they always seem to struggle at Minnesota. You know, just, I don't know why it is. Maybe it's the atmosphere. Maybe it's just, you know, the Minnesota Vikings play better at home with all that energy, you know, the skull chant, everything around that surrounding them. But I think the Detroit Lions are going to drop this game in Minnesota. Go five, you know, start the season five and three, which isn't horrible. You know, obviously much better than we've had in recent years, but they are going to drop this game to the Minnesota Vikings. It'll be close. I would expect it to be a low scoring game, you know, maybe a couple touchdowns on each side, but I wouldn't expect either team to go over 30. You know, I wouldn't expect either team to have, I wouldn't expect anybody on either side of the game uh, either team on either side of the ball. You know, I wouldn't expect big yardage. I wouldn't expect a ton of huge plays. But obviously with all the unfamiliarity in both teams, I think that it's just a matter of time. We have to wait and see how each team, you know, plays. We have to see how our improved, you know, hopefully improved our revamped secondary plays. You know, we'll have to see how Justin Jefferson and Jeff Gladney play. I want to see how the Minnesota Vikings cornerbacks can play after losing, you know, all those guys in free agency. Obviously, they still have Anthony Harris and Harrison Smith in the you know safety room. That's going to help, but the cornerbacks, I don't think, are very up to par. 
you know, and I just think that the Minnesota Vikings are going to find a way to take this one. They always seem to find a way to beat Detroit in Minnesota, even if Detroit is the better team that year. You know, I didn't think that they're going to split this game. I think they're going to split the series, but I think the Minnesota Vikings are going to take it at home. And obviously that means the Detroit Lions are going to take it in Detroit in week 17. But we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, that is what I think is going to happen in Minnesota. Obviously, nobody knows yet, but I think that that is pretty realistic to think that the Vikings are going to take this one in Minnesota. I think they're a good team. Uh, they lost to the Super Bowl losers last year in the San Francisco 49ers when they were in the playoffs. They made it to the divisional round and, you know, just weren't able to surpass the Nick Bosa-led 49ers defense. But, you know, still a solid team. They lost a lot of players, but I think that Mike Zimmer is a good enough coach to kind of help uh, soften the blow of losing all those guys and I think that the Detroit Lions offense and the Minnesota Vikings defense is still going to be a good clash of titans but with that being said that is all I have for you today if there is Lions news before tomorrow I'll obviously make a video letting everybody know but if there is no Lions news that is all I have for you today make sure everybody has a fantastic day um, you know, and I, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate everybody that watches these videos. Thank you all so very much for watching and I'll see everybody later. Bye.